<clears throat> Starting in about mid-2012, you probably started noticing a really sharp increase in what's known as a clickbait headline. You probably started seeing them on your Facebook newsfeed, Twitter, news sites, all sorts of stuff. A clickbait headline is a title that's designed to get you to click it. So it could be just a headline with text or a headline with a picture. And it often means something like, you won't believe what this old man does after dot dot dot, or my faith in humanity hasn't been restored dot dot dot, number six is amazing, or I didn't think they could sing, but what happened next blew me away. And the reason clickbait headlines get such a bad rap is because they're more trickery than delivering the goods. What they're doing is exploiting a part of the human psyche called a closed loop. A closed loop is what your brain expects to hear from a statement. And when your brain doesn't hear the loop close, it actually gets very interested and curious about what was there. For example, what if I just did this? Oh, hey, the crazy thing about an alligator is that they... Okay, now see how I just trailed off over there? That really bugs people's brains. They want to know what was the crazy thing about an alligator. Is it something that could be useful to me? Is it some information I can use to learn to hunt or be safer? What is it? So simply by trailing off, I kind of got you naturally curious just to click that headline. But what if I were to just close the loop for you and say, oh, hey, the crazy thing about alligators is that they're actually considered reptiles, not mammals. Crazy, huh? Well, that's not quite as interesting. So you probably wouldn't click on that headline if that's what you saw because the loop was already closed. So let's say I was actually pointing you to an article about alligators. One headline got you really interested and the other one didn't even make you budge. So when I go look at my stats about my alligator article, I'm gonna see like, oh my God, so many more people are clicking on this one. So naturally I'm gonna use the higher clicking one, right? And that's how these clickbait headlines got so popular because a couple of sites started using them very successfully. Everyone else saw that and was like, higher click-through rates, awesome, and started doing the same thing. I mean, but hell, even I'm sort of the problem. I teach people copywriting tactics and stuff, and part of that is how to make a better headline that's more clickable. Even our company, AppSumo, has a headline plugin that tests automatically different blog posts that garner more clicks based on the headline. But here's the main problem that will eventually cause the slow decline of a clickbait headline. And it's this, the content rarely lives up to the headline. That statement alone will single-handedly decimate this type of headline in the coming years. And here's the thing, clickbait headlines aren't anything new. In fact, they've been around like forever. You've probably seen it in old timey movies or TV shows where there's this little kid on the side of the road yelling, get your papers, stock collapse, stock collapse today. See, that was really punchy, huh? Just two words, some bad news, and everyone starts buying newspapers. But what if that same kid was yelling, stocks on average went slightly down today and it's not really that big of a deal. Anyone want a newspaper? Well, you can kind of guess that that's not gonna sell as well. So overhyping headlines is a thing that people have done for years and years, it's nothing new. Even one of my favorite sites, dig.com, is guilty of using clickbait headlines from time to time. Not as egregiously as others, but it's still guilty. Now check out this little box I saw on dig. The psychology of oversharing Facebook couples. It's got a lot of shares. It even has a sub headline that says, new research looks at who exactly keeps posting those public declarations of love on your newsfeed. That's quite a clickable article. But here's the rub. The actual article that it points to is very disappointing. I clicked it, I read it, and honestly, I got nothing out of it. It's 1.5 pages of fluff. Also, the research they refer to is highly dubious, misinterpreted, and was supposedly performed on just 30 volunteers on a college campus. Now, this is not proper reporting, proper science, or even a good sample size. Not only that, but the article didn't even draw any strong conclusions that I can learn from. Overall, my expectations were high, but the article delivered low. And that gap in between the high expectations but the low delivery, that's called disappointment or that meh feeling. Now, are the people making these clickbait links just greasy little weasels trying to manipulate you? Well, not really. You see, here's how it happens in the real world. An article is written, let's say it's called people who share too much on Facebook make me sick. And it's just a silly rant written by the gossip editor, no big deal. But then all these different news sites around the world that are really hungry to find content and just post it are like, ooh, an article about Facebook and relationships? Clickability of Facebook stuff, high. Clickability of relationship stuff, high. So both of them together, super high. 
So some researcher finds this article and then it starts going through what's known as optimization. This is where they try to get the clickability really, really high. And the way they do this is they start by the headline. So it goes over to some clever copywriters whose sole job is to take that headline and re-engineer it until it's really, really clicky. And what they do for that is just write the title a bunch of times in a different way. So title one, should you post a lot about your relationship on Facebook? Title two, Facebook relationships are crap. Title three, Laugh out loud. I knew my friends would break up when they posted this to Facebook, dot, dot, dot. Title four, three people you should not be on Facebook. Title five, what if your boyfriend posted this on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they'll just retype and retype these headlines until they get really good stuff. For example, Viral Nova tests at least 25 headlines per article. So they enter all of these little headlines into a split testing system. And all that does is it shows each headline maybe a few hundred or a few thousand times on some website. So maybe in the sidebar of a popular website, you'll see all these different links. Well, if someone around the globe clicks on that same web page at the same time as you, they'll likely see a different headline. That means you're constantly being split tested. So far, there's really nothing devious going on here. Split testing is a really helpful tool and really good for businesses. But here's where it starts to go a little bit wrong. Now that these people have written a ton of different headlines and split tested across hundreds or even thousands of people, they find the number one clickable headline. So for example, in this case, title eight would be the winner and it's the psychology of oversharing Facebook couples. So if you're gonna show a web page or a paid ad to a thousand people and you wanna make sure they click on something, you're definitely gonna use this headline because it's split tested to show that more people will click it than the others. And if you're a website whose sole purpose is to sell ads to all the traffic coming to your website, then you have hit the jackpot. And screw how good the article is, no, no one cares about that. You got them to click, right? Well, not quite. See, here's where the disappointment and meh feeling that will eventually unpopularize this type of headline comes in. See, there was tons of optimization done to the headline of that article. But remember we said, like, originally the article was made by some gossip editor or something just ranting about Facebook. So while the headline got a major upgrade and did a lot of testing and performed really well, the actual article got no love and attention. So now people get sucked in with a great headline but they get shown the crappy article. I mean, back to our example, when I saw the psychology of oversharing Facebook couples, I thought it was gonna answer all sorts of questions like who breaks up the most, which kinds of couples stay together the longest, uh, maybe show some data to actually back all this stuff up, uh, reference Facebook's many studies about this kind of thing they've done, uh, give some tips on how not to act. All these things would have made the article awesome, but none of that was there. So now you have a massively awesome headline and a very below average article. So when you expect something really great, but then get something very below average, you turn people off. And every time this happens, it disappoints someone. Now, here's the thing. The disappointment isn't that big, okay? People are bored and clicked on a link and they got slightly disappointed about the result. Big deal, right? But that eventually starts stacking and adding up to where people no longer trust those headlines. When it says number six will blow your mind and you click the article and read number six and it doesn't blow your mind, you're just like, eh, okay, I'm reading it, whatever. Okay, you got me the first time. You got me the second time. You got me the third time. The fourth time, I might hesitate. The fifth time, I'm gonna hesitate again. The sixth time, I might click it. Seventh time, I'm gonna start to get tired. Eighth time, ninth time. By the tenth time I've seen this, I'm kind of done and not really clicking on these headlines anymore. And this cycle has already happened before. Remember back in the day when I said that there'd be a little kid with a hat on the side of the road holding up really bombastic headlines like this? Well, people eventually realize that this headline was not totally true, it was just totally exaggerated. So they started going to more trustworthy news sources after a while, and it took a few years, but it did happen. There's a book by Ryan Holiday called Trust Me, I'm Lying, and chapter eight goes into some better detail on this yellow press. Okay, 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 enough complaining. What can we do about this? We all know that headline testing works really damn well. It's worked in the past, it works now, and it's gonna work in the future, so it's not going away. Instead, to remedy the situation, we can just change the equation around. Instead of amazing headline points to crappy article, we can make it amazing headline points to amazing article. Revolutionary, huh? But if you have an amazing headline and an amazing article, then you get high satisfaction rates, high click-through rates, high longevity rates, high trust rates. All of these are great for business. And if you're gonna do the sneaky little open loop trick where you don't tell them what it is in the article, at least close the loop in the article. For example, I know BuzzFeed gets a lot of crap for these clickbait headlines, but a lot of their stuff does add value. For example, 
Here's an article called 31 Things to Do in Austin Before You Die. Now, I live in Austin, so I've clicked this before, and I don't care about all 31 items on the list, but did I learn something from the list? And the answer is yes. I simply skimmed through this list of 31 things and picked up a few new items that I didn't know about before. So just through quickly skimming through this article of text and pictures, I actually did pick up like four or five new things about Austin that I didn't know about. So as clickbaity as that headline did seem, it actually did deliver the goods, meaning my expectation was high, and I got reasonably high outcome, so I was happy. So by all means, optimize the hell out of your headlines. But once you have that super high, clickable, awesome headline, make sure that the article is not down here in quality. Bring it up by adding stuff to it as you notice that headline is. So now you have an amazing headline and an amazing article, and that will make the internet a much better place. Thank you. always ask me about headlines, headlines, headlines. How do I get good ones? How do I come up with them? I've got writer's block about a headline. And don't feel bad. Even my friend Derek